On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to batch process a bunch of text files, and we're going to do it using Python 3's pathlib library, which makes going over a bunch of files on disk much easier than you may be used to with Python 2. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer at Unidata. On this week's MetPy Monday, we're going to go over some basics of Pathlib and how we can use it to go over a series of files that we have on disk. And we'll go over some other features of Pathlib in future videos. Before we do, I want to stress that this will only work if you're running on Python 3. Python 2 does not have Pathlib, but as Python 2 is being end of life in January and even sooner for MetPy, you really should go ahead and switch. So I'm going to present to you the little situation that I've created here today that we need to solve. You can see in my file explorer here in JupyterLab, I have a folder called data. In this folder, there are about 20 files, and they are all February 9th, 2019 time series data from a bunch of Mesonet stations, so MTS, Mesonet time series. If we pull open one of these files and have a look, you see that it has station ID, uh, number, time, relative humidity, temperature of the air, and so on. So let's say that I needed to know what the average temperature across all of these stations, or the average temperature at each station, rather, was. So I need to open this file, read it, calculate the average temperature, go to the next file, open it, read it, and so on. Now you could certainly do this with a glob and calling uh, open on a file name to create a file-like object and then doing some uh, string manipulation on that. But reading the file is something that pandas can do and it can also handle closing it out for us. And we can use pathlib to make going over all the files much, much easier. So let's take a look. To get some more space, I'm gonna get rid of my left sidebar and make the text a little bigger. So we're going to import the path object from pathlib. So this lets us create a path. This is a class, so notice the capital P there. Okay, so we run that cell. And now I'm going to create a relative path. I'm gonna call it P. And data is the name of my directory. So if we look at P itself, it is a POSIX path data. If I want to see where I am absolutely on my disk, we can call p.absolute and we get the full path. So you are on my desktop, MetPy Monday, data. So now we can look at everything in that path that matches a certain pattern using p.glob. So this is similar to Python's glob module that you may have used. If we call p.glob, we need to give it a path. In this case, just show me everything in the directory. You notice we get a generator object. That's not that useful for display, so we're gonna wrap it in list. So if I do that, we see here are all my files, but notice we have some things we don't want as well. So for example, .ds store, .ipymb checkpoints. These are hidden files and they're not data files. We don't want to try to parse them. So we can be a little more specific and say we want only star.mts and there we go. We could even say what is the length of that list? 20. So I have exactly 20 files. I'm going to go ahead and take the lin off. And let's just look at the first one for a second. So we need to open this and parse it to get our average air temperature. I'm going to import pandas as pd. I'm going to make a data frame. I'm going to use the function read table. And I'm just going to hard code for now 
that file name. And let's see how it did. Not very good, unfortunately. So these are a little tricky to parse because there are a couple of header rows. They have the copyright and some other information about the file. And then it's a combination of space and tab delimited, really. So let's start out with getting rid of the header rows and see how we do. So I'm going to skip the first two rows. Well, now we at least have just the column headers, but we only have one column or one data series here. So let's try separating by spaces. Well, that doesn't work either because there is a mix of spaces and tabs. So to do that, we're going to create a regular expression that's going to accept an arbitrary number of space characters. And you see we get a warning that says it's dropping to the Python engine because the C engine doesn't support regular expressions. That's fine. We can suppress the warning by telling it to use the Python engine. So engine is Python. Now the warning's gone. And we have some valid data. So that's great. If I look at my data frame, I could call data frame T air. There's all my air temperatures. I could call dot mean. And there's the mean air temperature for that day for station BRIS. So now we need to do this in a way over and over again on multiple files, which should scream to you that we need a function. So we're going to create a function. So def is my keyword here. Mesonet mean air temperature. It's going to take a file name. Don't forget your doc string. Calculate the mean air temperature from an MTS file. So first we need to open it. That's using pandas. So we're going to read file name. Skip rows is two. The separator is our regular expression. engine equals Python. Then we calculate our mean temperature. Okay, so that should give us the mean temperature. And then uh, let's return that. All right. I'm going to grab my file name from up here and let's test our function. This is sort of that incremental, we're building up functionality. We'll eventually get to where we need to be. Okay. So we've got a future warning, but that's okay. We don't, we can ignore those. And we have our mean temperature. So that seems to be working as we would expect. Okay, so now we could store that in a variable mean t air if we wanted. If we look at mean t air. All right, there we go. So now we just need to apply this same function to all of our files. So we're going to write a loop and we're going to use glob from the path lib. So this will look something like for f name in p.glob star.mts we're going to call our function so mean t air is mesonet mean temperature on f name and then I'm going to append it to a results list 
So outside our function, we need to create an empty results list. And once we run, you now see that we have a results list which has the mean air temperature at each of those 20 stations. So this was pretty cool. We're definitely below, uh, below freezing at most of these stations. So that's how you can use pathlib to easily look at a directory, find all the files with a certain extension or that match a certain pattern, and go ahead and loop over those to apply some operation for batch processing. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.